on a previous occasion i had reflected on the fruit of the holy spirit in one word the fruit of the holy spirit speaks about our character it's a development of our character and the development of any one's character doesn't happen overnight it takes long it takes us years and years and decades for us to form our character it takes us a second to lose that character but it takes years to form it i believe that this entire set of nine fruit which are there are different parts of our character so in a very short reflection let us make on each of these nine fruit the first fruit is love paul speaks to us in 1 corinthians chapter 13 verses 1 to 18 what exactly is love now friends in today's world unfortunately the meaning of love has been distorted i speak to various kinds of youths especially today about what is love most of them are scattered all over the place somebody says it's commitment somebody says it's emotional somebody says it's physical but what is love it describe it, it it defies understanding there's a place in israel where instead of love they say if they say i love you they say i sacrifice for you nothing can describe love better than the word sacrifice if i love somebody irrespective of what happens i will commit myself to that person even though i have to sacrifice my very self and who demonstrates love better than our jesus what did we give him we gave him something nice we gave him our sin we gave him our deception and our devious ways we gave him our irrepentance we gave him our backstabbing and how did he respond to us in love and how did he demonstrate that love to us through sacrifice so the first fruit of the holy spirit is love we need to understand this meaning of love as paul says as paul has explained in corinthians no it is kind it does not envy it sacrifices there's such a lot it's such a such a deep reflection on love in 1 corinthians 13 do try and read it friends I'm not going to dwell too much on trying to read the entire letter of paul read it read it and try and memorize that definition of love which paul has given us saint paul and as i memorize that that definition of love let me try and imbibe those qualities of love in myself let me try and manifest whatever is said about love love is the main thing love is the chief of all the fruit if you have love all the other fruit are part of love how do we love my friends hatred unforgiveness bitterness selfishness that's our selfish love that is not the fruit of the spirit is the fruit of the flesh i need to change the way i love first of all realizing that if i am loved by god it has got nothing to do with my merits it has just got to do with his blind grace and mercy towards me that's all i am not worthy of god's love none of us are worthy 
it is just his grace and his mercy that i am loved by him and if he is so loving towards me and forgiving if i accept his forgiveness and his love i think what i am filled with i should share with others okay so so long maybe i was filled with unforgiveness and hatred and bitterness and all that now i receive god's love so if god's love is within me god's love is within me i share that same love with others so if god has forgiven me i forgive others so the first fruit is the fruit of love the second fruit joy nehemiah says chapter 8 verse 10 the joy of the lord is your strength the joy of the lord is our strength now is it possible to be joyful is it possible to always be joyful it is it is it depends on where is my focus if i focus on my problems i will never be joyful if i focus on externals i will always be sorry for sorrowful and and very very bitter and sad i will always be complaining and thinking negatively and constantly moving around with sadness and that is see today if you look generally at what what is going on around you tend to become cynical we tend to become so bitter and sad because we see that nothing seems to be going ahead which makes sense or which can which, which you can you know, look forward to and say ha ah, this particular activity in this world is going to make us happy we know we are moving around in dark times so where is the question of feeling joyful under such circumstances yes there is a path you look at him in the darkness clutch on to him look at jesus and you will find his grace that he is with us that's all the lord is my shepherd i shall not want even though i should be walking in the valley of the shadow of darkness and of death i will fear no evil for he is there with his rod and his staff to comfort me so there is darkness it's a fact of life we are in a very dark world but we don't focus on the darkness we focus on the light and jesus is our light so don't worry joy the joy of the lord is our strength it is not just any joy at all it is not that new tv or that new cell phone or this new relationship which i have gone gotten into or this new house none of this is going to bring, bring us joy it's all temporary it is passing i have got married i have got children everything of this will give us temporary happiness this is not joy money finance what do you want health these are all temporary but it's the joy of the lord which is our strength keep focusing on jesus my friends keep focusing on god we will never ever feel so lost we will definitely go through times down times i'm not saying no but we will never feel so lost that we will lose hope the joy of the lord is our strength the next fruit we have is peace john chapter 14 verse 27 jesus says my peace i give to you not as the world gives let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid peace peace in this world am i asking to be peaceful does it make sense yes it does he is the prince of peace when the prince of peace is with us there will be confusion all around the psalm 91 10000 will fall at your side 
nothing will touch you. That's why, my friends, we need to cling to the scriptures. I am the vine, you are the branches. To bear good fruit, we have to be attached to that vine. And that wine is Jesus. From him come all these. Peace. You are at home. You got an alcoholic husband. He comes in. Every day you feel. It's hell to see, see that same kind of behavior at home. Can you be at peace? Your child or someone or the other is into some sort of an addiction. He's gone astray. Can you be at peace? You lost, lost your job. You don't have sufficient money. You don't have sufficient finances. Can you be at peace? Yes, my friends. The provider is with us. Don't, don't lose his hand. Don't lose his hand. Hold on to his hand. Don't lose. Don't let go of him. His peace will be there. That defies all understanding. Those who have been walking closely with him, that's why I always say, read the book of saints, the, the lives of saints. You'll find that they have been through the worst, the pits. But they've been peaceful. An example of Padre Pio, how his authorities, they even prevented him from saying the mass. They misunderstood him. But he was always at peace. What's going to happen? Here, slight inconvenience here and there, we lose our peace immediately. There's something which happens in the world, we lose our peace. You know why? why? It's because immediately our focus goes from the Lord onto that situation. Keep your focus on Him. Say, okay. Okay, now suddenly I feel that there is some situation which has taken place either in my house or with me. Maybe some illness or or uh, an event which has taken place which is impossible okay so am I going to focus on that and lose my peace or am I going to keep my focus on Jesus and say Jesus I know this has happened I cannot do anything about it but I trust in you I need your peace it's the fruit of the spirit how will I receive that peace? That peace? When I am attached to the wine. Because he is the source of that peace. That's the point. Being attached to the wine. I am the wine, he says, and you are the branches. When you abide in me, when you are attached to me, you will bear much fruit. Don't lose out on him, friends. Don't lose out on this wine, on Jesus you will never lose your peace. Fourth point. The fourth fruit. Patience. Romans chapter 12 verse 12. Be patient in tribulation and trouble. Patience. Today sadly the world lacks patience. We want God to act instantly and according to our plan and schedule. See when we don't get things according to our plan, we immediately get disturbed. When we pray for others, we expect them to change overnight and according to the way we want. Little realizing that we ourselves are taking so long to change. God is patient with us. We need to be patient with them. Each person, friends, you cannot take a flower which is growing there's a rose which is growing. The petals have come. You just cannot open those petals and say grow. It will grow in its own time. Now your child, your spouse, your friend, somebody or the other, you've been praying for that person to change. Now we don't know the circumstances under which that person operates. Patient. Be patient. In his time he makes all things beautiful. Patience, friends. Give the Lord His time. Not according to our time and according to our plan and in the way we want. He is the potter. 
we are the clay. We cannot tell the potter what to make out of us and what to make out of his people. He will make out of them what he wants, not, we dem not what we demand of him to make. So let us be patient, first of all, with ourselves, of course, because there are times where we want to change also. There are certain areas of us which are very stubborn, no? They are just not changing. But be patient. God is patient with us. But it doesn't mean be patient means I go and indulge in those same uh, weaknesses. I keep trying. But be patient. Every time I fall, come up, rise up again. But just as I am patient with myself and God is patient with me, I need to be patient with others. And the others may be, like I had mentioned earlier, an elderly person at home, a stubborn person, a neighbor who's become very arrogant. You can't change them. What are we going to do? You're going to force them to change. They're not going to change. Patience for the kingdom of God to come. That's very difficult today. Everybody tells us it's the end times. 2000 AD was the end times. 1998 was the end times. End times have been going on and on and on. We are getting fed up. We are losing patience. He says, when are you going to come again? Not our problem. Again, he says in the scriptures, no? It is not for you or for me to know when the end will come. No? Only the father knows. So I, why am I losing my patience? I keep my focus on Jesus as and when it has to come, it will come. Again, I attach myself to the vine and I am his branch and I say, Jesus, you take over. When it's time, it will happen. When it's time, my child will change. When it's time, I will change. Let me just be patient. I am attached to you. I learn your patience. Jesus has been patient with his disciples. Check out that. They were all ruffians. You know, when we look at Peter, Andrew and all of them, they were fishermen. A fisherman is not going to be there with very polite behavior. And when he comes in and says, may I come in please? Or uh, when he is speaking, he's not going to be uh, Peter and uh, Andrew and all these fishermen. They're not going to be speaking very kind, soothing, lovely, lovely words. They will be brash, rough, vulgar. Filthy language they must have been using. They were fishermen, hardcore. Jesus was patient with them. Even Peter, no, he tells Jesus openly, what are you talking about uh, dying? And uh, when Peter, James and John were there for the transfiguration also, should we call down, build tents here and all that? Everything, they wanted the kingdom to come immediately. Impatient. But Jesus was patient with them. Even they did not understand what he was talking about the kingdom. He was patient with them. He was patient with whom? With a person who sold him out, Judas. He was patient with him. He is patient with us, friends. And if he is patient with us, should we not be patient with others? Yes. Patience. That's another fruit of the Spirit. And from whom does it come? It comes from the wine. Jesus. When we are attached to Jesus, automatically we imbibe His patience. The fifth fruit, kindness. Colossians, the letter of the Colossians, chapter 3, verse 12. As believers, we should be kind. Now, this kindness actually I find is a very strange fruit, especially among us. We are so rude when we speak to each other at home. The children, Daddy bring the glass here. Mommy I want that thing. We have forgotten the basic fruit of the spirit or let me say manners, please, thank you. I'm sorry, pardon me. This is the fruit of the spirit. We are so rude. 
our own family we say no we are very kind to other people but in our own family do have we forgotten how to be how to be polite at home words of appreciation for those people who are doing good to us at home can we not say words of appreciation to them quick to criticize very quick if any mistakes are made by people at home quick to criticize but a word of appreciation and if i've made a mistake to say sorry what is the problem fruit of the spirit my friends kindness we are rude to those who are under us under authority under our authority our servants somebody who comes to work with us very rude to them yet when we go to work we expect our authorities to be very kind and to treat us with kid gloves what a dichotomy it is do unto others as you would have them done unto you no says jesus friends kindness this kindness again as you see jesus he is kind to so many people to the leper on the way to the blind person to the adulterous woman to so many people he is kind he never condemns he is never rude to them we too my friends how can we be kind again he is the vine we are the branches if we attach ourselves to him automatically we also will become kind and understanding like him the next fruit goodness romans chapter 15 verse 14 we should be full of goodness and galatians chapter 6 verse 9 let us not become weary in doing good for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up friends we need to continuously do good even if others do bad to us we do not repay evil with evil we repay evil with good people see so much of evil in us in our witness and they wonder whether we being disciples of jesus whether there is any difference between us and the rest of the world where is our christian witness the goodness which we were supposed to manifest we need to manifest goodness continuously doing good whenever jesus did good there were people who appreciated him but his own authorities not only they misunderstood him but they wanted to do bad to him they wanted to attack him for doing good but did jesus stop doing good he did not he continued doing good we too my friends need to continue do, doing good irrespective of how other people treat us goodness that's why paul says no do not weary about doing good continuously you keep doing good you know and i also discovered something more when do i do good when everybody is looking at me so that everybody will appreciate ha ah, what a good person he is the best time to go to do good is when no one is looking it will prove to me whether i am really a good person or whether i am doing good just for the sake of show so maybe it's cleaning up my house maybe if there is some garbage around my place quietly i take it out and i throw it it may be something it's some something very small but i do it when no one is listening or no one is looking at it because my father in heaven he has seen it he will reward me i must never stop being good and doing good and don't do good to show others do good because good should become spontaneously coming out from me within myself how will it come from within me when i am attached to the vine i am the vine you are the branches abide in me and you will bear much fruit point 7 the seventh fruit faithfulness in luke chapter 19 verse 17 jesus tells us how fruitful fruitfulness in small things
brings big rewards. See in the office now you will find V, pilfering of stationery, pilfering on the sly, putting false bills, breaching the trust of our employers. Elsewhere also, see our witness, unfaithfulness towards our spouse, financial embezzlement, etc., etc. Again, I am saying this faithfulness of mine, it doesn't come because people are looking or not looking. Faithfulness should come from within me. Even when people are not looking, I am faithful. Everybody else is flicking stationery. Everybody else is putting false bills. Even I will put. It doesn't work that way, friends. I belong to Jesus. I am not serving this human people. I am serving the master. So I manifest the fruit of the Holy Spirit in faithfulness. When no one is looking, my relationship with my spouse, my other relationships, I don't manifest this faithfulness for the world to see, but it is in the silence of my heart when no one is watching me, that actual faithfulness of mine is proved. In my thoughts, do I encourage and entertain those thoughts of unfaithfulness, whatever they may be? Check out friends. Again, Jesus was faithful to his calling, to his cause, right up till the end. And he was faithful not only to his calling, he was faithful to his friends. He never gave up on them, never. He even died, giving himself up for them. He rose again. And he appeared to those very people who chickened out on him. So nice. How do we how can we be faithful attaching ourselves to the vine? Jesus. He is the vine. We are the branches. We take his example. The eighth fruit, meekness or gentleness. James chapter 3 verse 13 says, it is a sign of a spiritual person. Am I a spiritual person or am I filled with pride and arrogance? Do I believe that the only way to correct a person is to be rude or arrogant? So this is another point which I need to understand. Gentleness. Meekness or gentleness, see being meek does not mean being weak. Humility, gentleness in my speech, in the way I behave, gentleness. Jesus was always gentle, especially with the sinners, especially with people who offended him. He was always gentle. So we too, my friends, need to attach ourselves to Jesus, pick up this trait of his gentleness, see ourselves today when we go for confession and we are there waiting to be absolved of our sins, we are waiting for the priest to give us a good dosing, mostly that never happens, he always treats us with mercy, when we, when we are our Jesus, when our God is forgiving us and being gentle with us, with all the wickedness and crookedness of our hearts, shouldn't we also be gentle towards others, to animals, towards animals, towards people who, who are unlovable, who don't love us? Gentleness, my friends. And how can we be gentle? Taking the example of the master being attached to the vine and we manifesting ourselves as the branches and the last fruit of the Holy Spirit is self-control. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 32. Better a man with self-control than a warrior. Self-control is I think a very easy fruit to understand. Alcoholism, speech we can't control our speech, drug abuse, sexual abuse and immorality. Riding our bikes 
or vehicles on the way out of control out of control eating what are we doing can we not exercise control we are followers and torch bearers of jesus christ and we have been asked to be lights in the darkness of this world matthew chapter 5 verses 14 to 16 you are the light of the world a town built on a hill cannot be hidden neither do people light a lamp and put it under the under a bowl rather they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house in the same way jesus says let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your father in heaven our light in the world will be reflected as we manifest the fruit of the spirit to all those around us isaiah chapter 5 verses 1 and 2 I will sing for the one I love a song about God's vineyard I wind up with this let us check it out My loved one had a vineyard on a fertile hillside He dug it up and cleared it of stones and planted it with the choicest wines He built a watchtower in it and cut out a wine press as well Then he looked for a crop of good grapes but it yielded only bad fruit is this the way respond be respond to our master no friends let us make an effort to be the good tree that yields good fruit amen